During the 1990s, there was a really weird period of time where TV networks thought they could capitalize on remaking Alfred Hitchcock movies for the small screen. Think ABC Movie of the Week type production. At the same time, there are also some big screen Hollywood remakes of Hitchcock films. We're not going to talk about those. Not today. As for these TV movies, well, I watched them. I watched all of them. Back to back. They range from mediocre to terrible. The films in question are 1987's Suspicion, which is 90s adjacent, so I'm making it count. 1991's Shadow of a Doubt. 1993's sci-fi remake of Lifeboat, renamed Life Pod. 1994's Notorious and 1998's Rear Window. If you're a fan of Hitchcock's Rebecca, then you're probably well aware that there are many, many adaptations of the Daphne du Maurier book that his 1940 film is based on. There is a 90s remake, but it's a BBC miniseries, so I have excluded it from the list. I actually have an entire video on all the Rebecca remakes. Hello, monkey face. In 1987, England's ITV and the PBS program American Playhouse produced a remake of 1941's Suspicion. Now, if you're a fan of this channel, you know that Suspicion is one of my favorite Hitchcock films. The original star Joan Fontaine, love her, and Cary Grant. Suspicion is the story of the spinsterish Lena McLaidlaw, who falls for a charming, manipulative, possibly murderous scoundrel named Johnny Aesgoth. Here, Johnny and Lena are played by Jane Curtin and Anthony Andrews. Or is it Anthony? Is it Anthony? So I Hello, made the mistake face. of thinking this film was going to give us a more faithful adaptation of the source material, the book Before the Fact, written by Francis Isles. The book is rich with lots of dark and seedy elements that could not be included in the 1941 version due to censorship. But they could have been included here. In the novel, Johnny has affairs with Lena's friends and the maid, and there were so many unmined, exciting plot elements that could have really made the new version into a dynamic story. Instead, director Andrew Grieve gives us basically a shot-for-shot, word-for-word remake. Hello, monkey face. Hello, monkey face. You me. I didn't oh, hear you come. You frightened me. I didn't see you come. Why is she American? I still haven't figured that out. I don't understand. And it's so interesting because this movie takes all of the main ingredients of the original but it falls incredibly short. They kept the same ending. What a missed opportunity. Why not use this chance to go with Hitchcock's original plan to make Johnny Peter, the killer? Stop it, you little fool. Stop I it. You, Johnny, let's go. Listen to me. How much do you think I'm making bad? Anthony Andrews could have been a murderer. This film aired just seven years after Hitchcock's death in 1980, and one reviewer asked, will Hitchcock be rolling over in his grave with this remake of Suspicion? Yes, yeah. Probably. To quote the New York Times, this suspicion makes for a distressingly flat psychological thriller. Gone are the Hitchcock touches of light and shadow. The quirky cuts that capture a fleeting emotion of an actor's expression. What's left in sparkling color is the equivalent of an average episode of Murder, She Wrote. Set in Santa Rosa in 1943, Shadow of a Doubt has the distinction of being Hitchcock's personal favorite of all his films. It's the story of a beloved uncle with a sinister and deadly secret who brings darkness to the idyllic small-town life of his niece. Starring Joseph Cotton and Teresa Wright, Shadow of a Doubt is one of the quintessential danger-comes-to-a-small-town films. Fast forward to 1991. CBS's Hallmark Hall of Fame has taken on the job of remaking this as a movie of the week. The location is moved from Santa Rosa to Petaluma, California. And instead of being 1943, it is 1952. I'm not sure why they chose 1952, but here we are. Like the remake of Suspicion, 1991's Shadow of a Doubt also gives us scenes and dialogue directly taken from the original. You've had something engraved on it. No, I haven't, but it will if you like it. But this one does something that makes absolutely no narrative sense. It adds a prologue where we actually see Uncle Charlie murder a rich Newport society woman. 
Besides murdering the socialite, that added prologue also murders any suspense that the film was supposed to later deliver. In the original, our suspicions about him grow alongside his niece, young Charlie. Is he capable of doing something horrible? Is he hiding something? We ask these questions along with her. When Uncle Charlie arrives in Santa Rosa, there is a real sense that this little piece of paradise has been invaded by something dark and nasty. And that's because before Uncle Charlie gets there, we've seen the close-knit nature of the community, the way people know each other's names. Oh, Charlie, I just called up your house. Telegram for your mother. We've also established a family dynamic. Mother, father, Charlie, Roger, and Anne. They've all got little quirks that come out and help build out their characters. If I wanted to murder you tomorrow, do you think I'd waste my time on fancy hypodermics? And God, do they do a disservice to Anne here. Played by Anna Mae Wanicott in the original, she's an absolute scene stealer that's way too wise beyond her years. I'm trying to keep my mind free of things that don't matter. What's that you're reading? Ivanhoe. Hmm? Well, you said shh. people who are hiding always say shh. In the remake, they've renamed the character Midge, and she gets maybe six lines, and I, I hate it. I hate all of it. Look, Charlie, that's Papa's paper. I'm not a baby anymore. Besides, that's Papa's paper. Mark Harmon is not menacing. Think about it. He's not scary. Tom Shale of the Washington Post was pretty funny. He said, Mark Harmon is a poor excuse for a swab, menacing villain. It's a pig he looks sty. like he couldn't scare a the parakeet. A pig sty. There's also a problem with the performances. There's something phony in the delivery of their lines. So it's just all uninspired. I'm in a rut. I'm in a terrible rut. I've covered this one in depth. So check out the link in the description below. Cary Grant and Ingrid Bergman take the lead in Hitchcock's 1946 espionage love story set in Rio de Janeiro. Grant plays government agent T.R. Devlin and he recruits Bergman's Alicia Huberman, the American daughter of a convicted German spy to infiltrate a secret Nazi group in South America. Originally airing in 1994 as a Lifetime movie, this remake stars John Shea and Jenny Robertson. It relocates the action from Brazil to Paris and the Nazis are swapped out for communists. But let me tell you, these guys are definitely not the vanguard of the proletariat. While a lot of the iconic scenes from the original are reproduced here, I actually found myself kind of reluctantly enjoying this one. I think that's mostly because this Robertson so and Shay actually do have chemistry. So all the love and the jealousy and suspicion and sadness you get with Bergman and Grant's performance. A man doesn't tell a woman what to do, she tells herself. Is here as well. Maybe not as expertly performed. No, a man doesn't tell a woman what to do. She does exactly what she wants to do. But it's there and they're doing an okay job. Look, John Shea is no Cary Grant and you can't help but compare him to Cary Grant, but He's able to be both charming and smug, which is important for the role. And Jenny Robertson plays Alicia as kind of a hard ass, and that helps keep the comparison between Bergman's characterization kind of at bay. This one actually manages to deliver on some level of suspense. It also sexes up the story for the early 1990s Lifetime movie viewer, aka my mom. I have to quote critic Susan Stewart writing about Notorious for the Detroit Free Press. She said, A remake of Notorious? What's next? A sequel to Gone with the Wind starring Tom Selleck and Delta Burke? Yes, actually, oh, yes. Right, Welcome to Charleston, Scott. But it was with Timothy Dalton and Joanne Wally Kilmer. Nineteen forty three's lifeboat puts nine survivors of a German U boat attack in a lifeboat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. One of those survivors was on that U boat, which of course leads to a lot of tension. 
I say, let's throw him overboard and then stick around and watch him drown. And when he goes down, I'll dance a jig like Hitler did when France went down. Starring Tallulah Bankhead, Walter Slezak, and John Hodiak, the entire film takes place in the lifeboat. Airing in 1993 as an original movie for the Fox network, LifePod reworks Lifeboat as a sci-fi story about survivors of a space liner explosion drifting through space in a life pod. And one of the survivors on this life pod is a terrorist responsible for the sabotage that destroyed the space liner and is now determined to kill all the other survivors. Out of all of these, this is the one I really wanted to like because it was a different take. It changed up the genre of the story. Only some of the survivors are recognizable as matches to the characters in the original. Honestly, I just really didn't care about any of these characters. There's a big explosion scene, which I actually thought was pretty good. And the rest of the special effects, well, it's a 90s TV movie, so just allow yourself to indulge in the aesthetic. Like I said, I do appreciate the change of genre. This was the last remake I watched, so I might have had remake fatigue. I do give them credit, while some of the situations are similar to the original, like the character Gus getting a piece of shrapnel in his leg. This was the most creative take. I think if I were to rank all of these from best to worst, I would definitely go for me. Now, this is just my opinion. For me, I found Notorious to be the best. And the worst would have to be Shadow of a Doubt. My overall takeaway from watching all of these and back to back in two days is that they just reinforced the absolute technical mastery of Hitchcock's direction and the teams that he put together to execute his vision of his films. I hear they're remaking Vertigo. There are 8 million stories in the cinema cities. This has been one. That was fun. Shout out to all my monthly channel supporters. Your names are listed here. If you'd like to support the channel, you'll find more information in the description below.